I recently saw a pretty interesting question that someone asked. Well, it wasn't asked of me, but the question went something like this. What, are, what would be the difference in between the ego and the uh, essence of who you are, and the same time the meaning that you create in your head? Or it was something in the lines of this. I didn't don't I don't remember the exact thing. And I did type them a response, but I didn't get back to see whether it got any replies, and guess what? I'm not even gonna bother. So the question well the answer would be very simple. See the ego itself, well it is nothing else but meaning. In order to live a uh, life of victimization, there always needs to be something or someone to be blamed. Since people who victimize typically end up being alone sooner or later, typically later, because people have, um, well, lessons to learn, well, they need to invent things. Psychologists, you know, and a lot of people who work in sciences or pseudosciences, they often end up working 20, 30, 40 years and, you know, they kind of end up not having achieved anything. So they have to invent that or come up with something that they, well, in between comas, invented or created, right? And through that, you know, they have some sort of uh, fulfillment. They think that, hey, they actually have created something and they can actually die at peace or something like that. See, the ego is a modern creation, more or less. It stems actually in older times. And it's a European invention, because the Europeans being more individualized in terms of societal existence, and typically being a bit more uh, everyone for themselves, they needed to identify themselves with something. If you take the Chinese people, for example, they live in Confucianism, which always identifies you with a larger group or an entity or a group of entities that is always much better than you, and you have to be humble and learn from them. Except their humbleness kind of tends to be a bit towards mindless humbleness, but, well, I'm not here to simply judge other people's opinions and ideas. Hence why Asian way of being is a bit different, well, very different from the Western uh, way of being. So the ego, you won't be finding much about the ego in the East, right? They say in the East that there is no such thing as the ego. But at the same time, the Japanese people present themselves through literature as the three-faced people. Because they also have their own masks and the such, but they don't identify with a certain ego. They are in a way aware that that is nothing else but a mask that you require socially, uh, you know, to please certain people. And anything that you want to present, you will need more or less a so-called ego, right? But there is a difference in between acknowledging that you have different masks, let's say, or different roles that you have to play to suit socially speaking, certain groups, because we're social beings, and this social mimetism is important more or less. And, well, that, and the other part where you attach yourself to the ego and you uh, put a lot of blames on it, and, you know, people always have this bad habit of blaming fate, God, now the more modern term ego, because there always has to be a target for someone's misfortunes, right? When someone's in victimhood, everyone else is against them, the whole world is against them, and there's always someone uh, to blame. If everyone is against them, uh, the hardest choice for them is, you know, making their mind whose fault is it, and it's typically everyone else's, because when people are in victimhood, everyone else is doing much better, right? Especially with mass media giving you the impression that everyone is leading a perfect life and you're the only loser who doesn't. That's a very cute illusion. Now, when it comes to the uh, answer, which I placed in a very short form, I said, see, you as what you are, I said, I never believe in a soul, okay? It's a very cute invention of the predecessors of the woke movement. But the point is, you see, there is an essence of life. That which is you beyond your ego, beyond every bit of meaning that you have accustomed yourself with and that you have assimilated, integrated into your being. And, well, 
that is technically what some people call the soul, but that is basically the bit of awareness. I would call it the piece of life that you basically are. And that is nothing else than, let's say, a star, right? You can call that a star because it is brimming with light and it has a certain vibration to it. Every bit of meaning that you identify yourself with, take it as nothing else than a Dyson sphere, right? A Dyson sphere, for those who don't know, it is a sci-fi literature building which is constructed around a star and it has, you know, glass captators or absorbents, whatever you call them. Technically, it is a transparent or demi-transparent structure in many situations which absorbs the light emitted by a star. It no longer allows the star to slip much light outside and much heat, it simply absorbs it, therefore becoming more or less a generator or an energy farmer. Technically it's ruining the temperature in the whole solar system, but mostly to build one you kind of need to consume a lot of the solar system in the first place. And you can use that huge battery now, you can use all that energy for big projects, right? You no longer allow the star to simply in between inverted commas, waste its energy in all the possible directions, you are channeling that into the Dyson sphere and through that, through any to any big consumers, like you can imagine large-scale ship constructions, right? Or any other projects that may require that much amount of energy, right? We're talking about solar civilizations here, or probably intersolar, or probably even galactic civilizations. Although I'm guessing galactic civilizations most likely have means of farming even black holes. If, well, I'm not sure, sci-fi says that you can farm them, but it's, you know, sci-fi. So I always told people, every bit of meaning is another shield, another sheath, another layer of a Dyson sphere that you put on. And that star, which is technically you, gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. That's why the more people get attached to meaning, to all sorts of ideas, uh, the less they have a sense of what they are. And therefore, they will feel even more of a sense to attach themselves to meaning. Because the more meaning you attach yourself to, you become more ignorant. Consequently, well, ignorance means you are disconnecting yourself from your own pain, from your own suffering, and from life itself. So when you're not interested in life, Well, we are not interested in examining it either. The unexamined life is not worth living, as I said. And, well, other people said, but I said this in the answer. And that's kind of it. It's a death spiral. The more you attach yourself to anything, it's more or less a death spiral. So hopefully this video raised a bit of awareness. You are appreciated, as always. Take care. Enjoy life. Remember that life is like a game, so... Play the game, don't let the game play you instead. And these being said, looking forward to seeing you in the next content that I have. There's plenty of content on this channel. Take care, enjoy life, Ferenjan Board signing out.